I'm J.B. Bryan, President and Chief Investment Officer of J.B. Bryan Financial Group, the home of Afroeconomics, a firm I started in 1995 to do exactly what we're doing tonight, addressing economic inequality. So I want to make sure that I give you the call-in number before I forget. Just got a number so that we can talk. <laughs> I got this number, and it is one. I wish I could put this. I don't know. I can't put it anywhere. I could have put it. One, eight, three, three. Can you type it in there? Can you put it on there? On here. Uh, um, yeah. One, eight, three, three. Oh, I could put it, um, I could have put it behind me, whatever. I'm putting it on. You write, this is all about you. Write it down. 1-833-216-0978. This is by popular demand because you refuse to allow me to see you. And it's very hard for me to allow you to ask the question and not see you because then I'm afraid that I'm going to cut you off. And then, so... I want you, you, to call 1-833-216-0978 and share with me what's on your mind when you think about economic inequality. I'm going to pull up, I am going to screen share the article on, um, on our discussion tonight. And the what I want to talk about is the cost of inequality, faster lives, quicker deaths. And of course, Delia, as expected, look, <laughs> it wouldn't pop up as I want it to. Look. <laughs> what, look, that is like typical of everything that's like been um, just, just, you know, all the, all the, all, if anything that um, can happen has not happened yet. So <laughs> I thank you, God. <laughs> but I'm going to try, we're going to try with this. I don't know if I can share. It worked! I hope that you all can see. Can you see the article? The cost of, you can see the article screen has, sharing is paused, live, stop share. So it came up? No, you paused it. Stop. What you saw? It? No, it moved and then. Oh, there it is now. I don't know. My my production assistant, y'all. <laughs> there, there's a lag. <laughs> exactly. I'm moving too fast. She's like, she's like, there's a lag. Now let me know when you can see the article, The Cost of Inequality, Faster Lives, Quicker Death. There you go. This one. Indeed. So the let's talk. I sent this out to you with the invitation. Because um, I wanted you to have a chance to kind of, you know, see this thing. It's interesting to me. But I thought one part of the um, article that I thought was really interesting is that it, it addresses the fact that people don't think that there's any inequality anymore. So the researchers were saying that because of that, um, that it was, they had to be very careful on how they ask the questions and how they address things because they feel like that we're just not taking advantage of the opportunities that we're given and things like that. So my, my point of this discussion is to for you to call in and share with me what you think would be the cure to economic inequality for us. Like what do you think could, you know, that, what steps could we make because there's an emphasis here that they do share that they feel that a key, you know, that the government is a major um, a player, that the government is going to be really important for this to happen, you know, for um, economic equality to happen, that the government will have to do um, some adjusting in how um, wealth is divided in the country. And um, I am of the opinion that if that was going to happen, it would have happened when it was supposed to happen because the government was supposed to make sure that all of the slaves, especially those who fought in the war, were given the 40 acres and a mule. 
So it doesn't, um, it's just not logical for me to base my future on there's going to be a, a, an adjustment and, and a, a big um, um, change in that, that, you know, the portion of money that, that we're not getting proper pay and that we're not getting, um, and, that, and that our health is being damaged because of the, stre the stresses that um, have become a part of our community. So let me address, we have some um, chats that are coming in. Y'all, you know, I, I really want to hear, <laughs> I want to I hear some voices here. Let me see. Okay, wait a second. Look, I want to hear some, call my phone. So the, um, okay, speak on it. It's a real great article. I read it before. Oh, good. You read it before we started. Uh, I can see good for you. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth, 40 acres and a mule. Indeed. Now we've got a lot of participants right now. So I want you to chat or we want you to call and to express what do you think that we can do in order to change the economic situation of us. They're saying that we're not making as much. You know, that we're not making as much. We definitely don't have the wealth. And they're saying that we're dying sooner. And that will, that our life, because our lifespan, and remember the 10th principle of Afroeconomics, you know, what they really need is to address the solution. Afroeconomics, the Afroeconomics algorithm addresses what they're saying. I feel that, you know, and then also I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take my time. But sometimes y'all get mad when I keep the article up too, mm -hmm. too long. It says, uh, African Americans contract serious diseases sooner resulting in almost 100,000 deaths that could not have happened if they fell sick at the same rate as whites. That um, Williams compared the loss of life to a fully loaded jet, jumbo jet, with 265 passengers and crew crashing today and everybody dying and the same thing happening tomorrow and the same thing happening every day next week and every day next month and every day for a year. Wow. Since 1950, the black-white gap in life expectancy has been halved from eight years to four years, but it would, it would take another 30 years for the lifespans to become equal if the average longevity of whites remains static, but they will, you know, continue to live longer as well. No, and, the, and I know, we all know, like, you know, stress, Goodness gracious, you know, stress is, is a killer. The, lo the longer the Hispanic immigrants live in the United States, the less healthy they become. And there's 10 standard measures of, of health, blood pressure, cholesterol, show that bodies of African Americans at midlife have aged 10 years faster than whites. The premature aging shows how physiologically compromised you are because of the onslaught of chronic, ongoing physical, chemical, socio, so, psychosocial sensors. Mm. Psychosocial, and that's the truth. Like things that affect our mind socially, it's true. I was in this situation, all the time I'm in this situation, trying to, take care of my clients, you know, and I'm calling a majority firm that has to do something for my client. And I try not to think that, why do I have to go through all of this to just make sure that they're looked out for? And I see so many people I meet that have been totally taken advantage of. And, you know, there was a, um, a brother last week that was telling me about a decision that he had made, and um, he wasn't from this country as an immigrant, you know, and um, he, he, he was saying that he was going to um, go with this major firm, you know, because, you know, they were so big and, 
you know, that he just loved me, but he was going to go with this other firm instead because he just felt more comfortable with them because it was such a big company and they were letting him work with three different advisors who were going to be working on his account. And, and I said, you know, I understand that, but do you realize that how much money that means everybody has to get paid? Do you realize that their products are costing you more than you're paying higher fees to them and you're not buying anything differently than what we could get and I wouldn't put you in that because it's garbage. It's their products that have loads on them to make sure that everybody gets paid, plus the other three guys that make you feel important. And then he told me about the tax strategy that they have for them. And I was like, I don't even understand why I'm trying to save him from this because he's going into this. You know, I mean, he, was, you know, he said, do you mind if I, you know, call you and talk to you? you know, about this, you know, again, but he had no intention of ever doing any business with Afroeconomics. He told me that black women had taken advantage of him in his past when he came to this country. And that was from day one. Why he, you know what I mean? It's just, so it's really sad how we treat each other, you know, and he had everything. He has no idea how he's about to get literally, no, just figuratively, I guess, <laughs> raped by that company. And I tried to just open the door to like these things he was saying. Cause I know that God must have told him to tell me about it because he didn't feel comfortable about it himself. And I said, even though these things like sound very complicated and they did these things and it's very impressive, but I just say all that to say, it's just that he's creating this stress for himself. And then we have this so psychosocial stressor to feel like that he has to be a part of that. Even though it's not even bad, good for him, he just feels more confident knowing that he's being robbed by them. It makes him feel better, you know, more approved, more a part of, you know? So then when you end up with less money, you know, and you, you can't live as well, but they're living large because, you know, because of your psychosocial stressor. <laughs> Look, and chronic, a chronic disease of feeling like you're less than. It will kill your pocket. Mm. And said, so much attention has been paid to economic inequality affecting all Americans, more so people of color. But for Blacks and Hispanics, the wealth gap is wider and more significant. Mm. A census report from 2014 says that Hispanics earn 70 cents and African Americans earn 59 cents for every dollar whites earn. Yuck, that's it. You know, so you're talking about We've been here for generations and generations and generations, and we're making less than people that come to the country. For African Americans, the disparity is the same as it was in 1978. Mm, right? So it says another report from the Census Bureau in 2013, for every dollar of wealth the white household had, Hispanic household had seven cents and black household had six pennies. Mm. Taken together, wow, I don't even, it's the wealth gap. There's, that's where the real problem is. So we've talked about that. Even that other one that came out last about the road to zero wealth, you know, but, and then they offer again as our solution, you know, the education. Uh, <clears throat> component. But I like this one a little more because they're talking about not just higher education, but the education in elementary school, the element, the education that you get at home, the, the education that can allow you to get a skill and get a trade and move forward without having to go into school loan debt. You no, know, just your basic education that we need, but our communities 
are not being funded and supported and we keep voting in these people who go to Congress and don't do anything for you. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Since 1978, and they keep having these, you know, congressional black parties, congressional black Congress, big expensive parties, and then we still have our neighborhoods that don't have equality in school. Because we're not putting our effort there. Everything is about being popular and politicians with their YouTube channels and stuff like that. And we're allowing them to get away with it. Mm, it's ridiculous. So the my phone, if you have a comment, especially if you're a politician that's not doing what you should be doing, please feel free to call me at 1-833-216-0973. Two one six eight three three two one six zero nine seven eight on our solution to the economic inequality crisis. So we're going to go. <laughs> I want to see you all. Like, I'm sorry. The um, I know that you may want to stop the share for a second. The I, oh my goodness. I have dissertations up here. <laughs> Ms. Wanza, you could have written the article. We must, we have to not be fooled. It's Ms. Wanza. Why? I know. Why did you call? I should call your number right now. I'm not even going to read it because you, you're going to call. I'm just going to torture you. So I'm not going to read. Yeah, um, call me and say that. I'm going to hear your voice say it. And then, Dreamer, call me. We, I think we have to stand for something or fall for anything. You can't say that. So you can't say that on the 833-216. I'm going to take the comments down. And then Rhonda, Rhonda continues. You all should see this. She just didn't want to talk to me. What is that about? We're not, I'm not going to tell them your name. I know where you're from. <laughs> Rhonda from Maryland says, we have to not be fooled. We used to have our own functioning communities. Then we started wanting what they have, not understanding, have what they want to take. We have, see, I'm, a, see, I'm messing it up. That's right, go on and call. That's right. This, oh, look, the first call, y'all. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Miss Wanda from Maryland, 301. You're not I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the webinar on my phone. I just like, you didn't know you could call. Like, yeah, so I can't remember everything I will, but um, <laughs> I, I, I so agree with this because you know, to really think about it, to go back to think about it, we used to have our own um, community. That's right. Our own welfare community. We had the cleaners, we had the corn stores, and I'm thinking about here in D.C. Yeah. The teachers got so gentrified that there's nothing shocking about these kids anymore. Yeah. Other than the impoverished neighborhoods that they get ready to gentrify again. Right. So, you know, we have I know. I mean, but you see what that comment you, you made about, um, I thought that's interesting too. There's so many of my um, clients that I know in Prince George's County have to send it. Yeah. Well, they don't have to, but they choose, they send their kids to private school. That's they not to, fair. They don't have to, but they, if they want a good school, they do. Oh, my. And, and so I agree about the politics. The politics of Prince of County is horrible. Yeah. Somebody from Prince of County is on this call because they didn't inspire. I did not vote for Angela. I also vote for none of them. Good for you. They, 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 they could not answer my question about how they tax the hell out of homeowners. That's here. right. The main tax base. That's so, right. You know, we got the highest tax base. But as long as they're popular, if they're they're popular, they have yep. Have a little. Look, all they have to do. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that is my anthem. So yeah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you remember. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then, that's right. <laughs> but you're right on point, and I thank you, and you made my day, and you will go down in history as the first caller I ever had, ever. You. Oh. That's so sad. That's so sad. Yep. Yep. That's but if I mean I've had this I had I had this um you know um I've had several times, you know, where I have gone to bat for clients and I have repeatedly I know that they would not talk to a white male the way that they talk to me. No. You know, and that's and, and I mean, I've seen, I have this one company, they had charged the client inappropriately. And they said, okay, okay, we'll pay them back. We'll pay them back. We'll, 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 put, we'll put it back in their account. And then, right. and then he said, you know what? No, I don't like you. We're not. They can, they can move their account. It doesn't matter to me. We're not giving them a dime back. And that is ridiculous. Right. I can't believe it. I can't believe you. So then, and then when you want to go and try to sue them for doing wrong, that's why I believe that Afroeconomics has to be the will of God because there is no way that we're going to continue to move forward as a people without having a united financial organization that can speak for us. I, mean, I want to be able to say, I want to be able to say, look, you have... You, You've gone after my community, exploited them, taken out, you know, made, basically offered these mortgages. Now you're going to back and going to foreclose all these people. But we did. But so when that happened, and we haven't, and they, you know, they speak of that in this article. We haven't recovered. Prince George's County has not recovered, but Fairfax County recovered. And Fairfax is in Virginia, for those of y'all. So you're talking about a predominantly white communities, they've recovered. You're talking about the predominantly right. black communities who still don't see home values pre-mortgage crisis <laughs> because of that's all the right. foreclosures. That's why I, I, I told Angela also when I went to buy a house and then the Washington Post, the Washington Post ran that article and, and instead of her or anybody in the county saying, you know what, there's truth to that, they get mad and embarrassed about it. There's truth to it. That, I mean, how are you going to be mad and embarrassed in your people in the county? So they get mad. They try to sue the Post for writing the truth. The people are struggling. They had, couple, they had black couples that they interviewed. That, I was like, this is crazy. And they still people upside down in their mortgages, you know, trying to get the value back up. Wait, exactly. That's, that's, I mean, that's real. That's real. That's just keeping it real. So, yes. That is sad. And that's our best. That is our best. So, you, I mean, you're talking about our best black community in the country. That's our best. That is the best. So think about. It's like, so think about think about our urban communities in the city. You know that, and these kids, you know, can't even enjoy having a a a, a park on the corner. You know where they can go to, or having a school that has a computer for everybody. Or tablets for every kid. Yes. They get, you know, they're not. We're not getting the basic things, but then they keep running all these statistics, saying how we're not. Right. You know, they need to build these prisons based on where we are in third grade. I mean, that's disgusting. It's disgusting. Don't get me started about the prisons. Don't get me started about the prisons. Yep. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, but it's you know, it's like I mean that is that is our slavery. Yeah. That's our slavery for today. That is our slavery. And then and then they legalize legalize all it is it's a trap for us. All of the marijuana, all of the drugs, all of the alcohol, all of the cigarettes, all of the all of it is a trap to entrap us because of that psychosocial stressors. So what did they make for people with psychosocial stressors? Pretty word, or you know that these people have been dogged out. So we're going to get. You don't know how many times I think to myself, oh my God, thank God I don't drink. It is yeah, just yeah. all basic stuff, just basic life, not even adding in the fact of being an entrepreneur, being a single parent. You know what I mean? All of those, those are, mm -hmm. things that we too often are faced with. And that's why we don't get to do what ultimately will take our communities farther is entrepreneurship. Right. If we, if we got, because first of all, we're not going to have the stress. You're not going to get the stress of somebody not understanding your hair is nappy, mm -hmm. not understanding right. that, um, right. Right. you know, that, that you want your grandkids here or, you know, to be able to drop the bus afterwards or you don't want to be able to pick them up or, you know, whatever you need to right. do to keep your family together, you know, that with you on the bottom of the totem pole in corporate America, it's, you know, doesn't give you that freedom to really work with your imagination and get your confidence up and become all that you right. can be. And then right. We, right. we take the job and then we start going into debt because that is indeed modern slavery. That being in debt, owing everybody, they don't, you know, they don't address this in the article, but that is the problem. Everybody is getting paid off us. We're going to work. Yeah. You're making these incomes. <laughs> you're still struggling because by the end, you know, and then you, then you say, I want to save something. So then you save something and you put it in there and you accumulate. But at the same time, you buying all this stuff, finance. So even though if you looked at everything that you're saving, if you got rid of all your savings, you still couldn't pay off all of that stuff. That's, that's right. That's right. Because we're buying it because of those psycho stressors. And it leads to one escape after another escape after another escape. Yep. Mm. Yeah. You know, yes. Yes. And I do believe that needs to be taught back, and that's one solution. Yes. Uh, start with our kids that at first to be humble. Yes. You know, you don't, you know, it's a, it's a value in working for what you want. Yes. You know, if you get everything fast, yes. there's no value. Yes. You know, yes. There's no value in getting everything fast. I want it now. I want it now. Yes. So when you got to work, you got to save, you got to Yeah. You want your needs. Yeah. Look at it a little bit. Yeah. You know, well, and we so have to, yes. My kids don't the same place because my ex husband had the same mentality. Not this, you know. Yes. But, you know, yes. we get this whole society that thinks that way, you know, and, yep. and, and the social media and the TV is just throwing all of this stuff at these, you know, young people to, you know, really, uh, to, you know, create yes. something in their mind. Yeah. And so that's where it starts. I'm always saying it starts in the mind. And it's so yep. you know, but Yeah. Look, psychosocial. <laughs> that's right. That's. Yeah. So, but so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, that's indeed. Right. I'm going to get off the phone. I'm going to get off the phone. I'm going to get Thank you. Thank you. So we're talking about our solution to the economic inequality. My major solution, I suggest, is we have to be debt free. We have to. We can't. We have to control whatever aspect of our financial life that we can control. And that's all we say. You can't control if they're going to give you a raise. You can't control, you know, uh, how many hours you're going to get. 
if you're going to get the bonus, we, you know, you do your best. But what you can control is how much debt you go in. I mean, I challenge you to make a, a, a commitment to just being debt free. I don't feel that there's any justification to us for, oh, but I got to, that has to be financed or I have to do that. You know, no, you don't have to do that. And if you have to do it, make sure that at least you're going in with 20% down. So you have some equity in there. So then your worst case scenario, you can refinance. And see, a lot of people lost their homes because they had no cushion. They had no space. So they had done those little adjustable, you know, rates and all this stuff. And, you know, I already said in my economic update that the Federal Reserve is already saying that they're going to be increasing interest rates at least three times next year. That's what they forecasted. And another time before this year ends. So if you're chilling in an adjustable rate, uh, the uh, like home equity line or adjustable rate credit card or, you know, anything that can adjust on you, what does that mean? So these updates and our discussions are for us to take from it what's going to help us. We hear this, we participate, you know, we do. What is, but what's going to help us? We got to get smart. You got to lock it in. You got to lock in interest rates now. You need to talk to me about what would be the smartest way to refinance. And I don't do mortgages. So you talk and you talk to me so you can get an unbiased opinion on it. As a member of Afroeconomics, that's the stuff that we do. Well, how is that? Like, you know, what, what, what are you doing? What, how are you doing that? Like the things that we discover are amazing. <laughs> amazing but somebody did just help but yeah so what do we need to do reduce debt get rid of debt i got the 800 plus club i'm coming strong for 2019 on having an 800 plus credit score why because it affects your if you start your own business it's going to affect you if you don't have your own business you want to get a job it's going to impact you you want to get car insurance you want to get life insurance, you're going to credit score, credit strength is important. There's even a correlation between bad health and bad credit stressors. So these I'd say we avoid the debt, live modestly, you know, that, and then help people, help people more, help each other. We have to help each other more. And I'm not saying give anybody any money because no, that doesn't help anybody. But teach someone what you know. Encourage someone. Avoid by any means giving anybody money because that's just giving a man a fish. But you want to teach him how to fish. You want to teach him how to make money. Like Ms. Walter was saying, you know, get in it. Like, you know, that learning just how to do it and being willing to work hard that's the key, you know, and being willing to do, being willing to sacrifice. I spoke with someone today and I was, that was our key that we were talking about was, you know, she had a situation where she had everything that she wanted, but then she had to give up something in order to get it. And she said, well, I wasn't going to get that up because, because I was so and so. And I said, well, then you weren't ready for it. So we have to realize that if you really want something, you have to be willing to give up everything that you have, everything, in order to get it. If that's what you really want, if that's what you think you really should be doing. You really want to start a business. You really want to change your family for generations to come. Then you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice to make it happen. Mr. Banks says, fear is what everyone must overcome. This takes time. Each of, one of, each of us must take control of our credit reports, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He said, <laughs> Rhonda said, even Jesus worked. That's right. Yes, he did. We have to get it in. And now I know 
But then at the same time, somewhere in there, we have to make a point of trying to protect ourselves. I have a second call. I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let y'all go soon, but we have to pick up another call from 301. It's Mr. Jefferson. How are you? I'm doing good, JB. How about yourself? Great. Good to hear your voice. Okay, uh, I guess I want to add on some of the things you've been saying. Yes. Uh, one thing that People have to learn, they have to get the understanding of how the game is played, the economic game. Uh, because when we don't understand how to play the rules of the game, we will lose. We will be the loser because we cannot play the way we think it should be played. That's right. An example is, is uh, if you have, if you're in debt, you must pay whatever that minimum or above that minimum each month on a scale that's old. Mm. You just can't, you cannot just uh, say, I'm not going to make that payment. That's right. That's right. So that's uh, right. That's you right. have to make that. That's right. You have to make that. You, when you were talking about the credit scores, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have to do that. 800 plus all my, all of the members of Afroeconomics 2019, 800 plus. That's why I'm starting early because that I, I, it has to be a commitment for us, you know. And um, Mr. Jefferson, you're right on point. And if anybody wants to be a part of something that's going to make sure that you're elevated, that your life is better from it, get in Afroeconomics, you know, because it makes a difference. It, it just it makes a huge difference in having an accountability partner and then being part of an accountability group. Now, everybody doesn't know. I'm the only one that knows, you know, you, you have your financial planning agreement with me, but it does help knowing that you're not alone. You know, I mean, we have to realize that we, you know, that we, most of us are statistical anomalies. We just are. Like when it comes to our community, the discussions and the stuff that we're talking about are not discussed or, uh, as frequently as they should. And what it's our responsibility for you to share this type of information and get this stuff out there because we have to raise our sense of responsibility to ourselves and to our community. It's my responsibility. You know, I've, I've, I've asked projects to let me come in so that I can come and talk to the people and they go, I got to get back to you. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, let me know. You know, and then you have, you know, I'm talking about you're in a, they, they are in a position to help I, people come from, depending on the first of the month for a check and encouraging people and teaching people how to be entrepreneurs. That's my point. I want to be in our community teaching our people how to not need any check from any government source, you know, unless it's your social security that you earn, but that we can do this. We can build our businesses. We can hire one another. We can build a strong economy. We can make a huge impact and build this country up. This country needs us to be successful. You know, they might think that this is going to work, you know, by the discrimination and not paying equal pay to people, but it's not going to work. It's not going, it's not going to work. That we have to make a commitment to making sure that everybody is getting paid correctly. And the way to do that is go out there and get our own. That's, I, I mean, I never wanted to ask anybody for anything. When you have your own business, when you're creating your own income, you don't have to ask for anything. You want to make more money, you work harder. You have a job, you should build your business while you're working because you're not going to want to work there all the time. It's the perfect time to start a business is when you have a job. There's a whole bunch of hours in the day. You're only giving them six or seven. You know, you can give the rest. What do you do with the rest of the day? That's going to fill that wealth gap. The more businesses we have in our community, that wealth gap is going to close again. Better to be the loner than the borrower. I know that's right. 
That's that is the word. But thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Oh, one other thing I wanted to comment on, since I'm yes. also from Prince George's County. Yeah. yeah. The uh, when you mentioned about the housing crisis, uh, some of the people put themselves in bad positions because uh, they wanted to uh, buy a house That's right. that was beyond their means. Yes. Uh, they were yes. told about programs, or they did not really That's look right. at the program that was being presented to them. That's right. It, uh, it's kind of like if you go to a car dealer now, one of the games that a car dealer used to play. That's right. Uh, they say, how much you want to pay a month for this car? That's right. Get them. Get them. And then, and once they find out, okay, you want to pay $100 for the car? You got it. You got the car. <laughs> but the people may not know that the financial cost of that with any type of interest that they're paying instead of maybe being a three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, right. that could be a maximum loan with very high interest. That's right. We did a Wednesday. So, There's a study on that, Mr. Jefferson, and they someone, especially black women, or if they said women of color, you know, you can see we were like, they had women of color with higher, higher credit scores, better income, that were paying higher interest rates because they don't understand the game. And they would go in there, and it was sad. I mean, they had like the whole interview and they, it, it was talking about discrimination in auto purchases. And they were like talking to us rudely, not being as helpful, not giving us the offers that they were giving to other people, oh, I mean, to people who were not of color. It was, um, it, it's, it's really sad, but it was true. The research is there. I did, I did a segment on, it. yeah. Well, I do know that if they find the people who want something, that yep. if they can offer it to them at a price that they can pay, they'll do it because the people That's don't right. care. That's they right. may not care whatever it is. That's if right. they feel that they can pay for it, whatever That's the right. cost, they'll That's buy it. Is that, is that considered Prince George's County where the uh, Maryland Live is, where the gambling is? Yes. There's, uh, well, Maryland. The Merlin Live is not in Prince George's okay. County. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, the Merlin Live is in Anne Arundel County. Oh, good. That's good. Okay, because there's still, also still the state of Merlin. But there's it's still oh, the state of Merlin. Yeah, oh, right. But there's also research on um the um the people of color, specifically um women of color, are um more apt to have a gambling problem. You know, like we're like we're filling that place up. You know, that's really sad. We have to stop. Uh, Ms. Wanza just made a comment and she said, that's a mental problem wanting more than you can afford. It's <laughs> so true. Yep. Yeah. But but a lot of that could be yep. based off from, from years past. Uh, yeah. Some people who may have grown up yep. and they would, in order to show you a manhood, you had to be able to uh, eat your family. Yes. And sometimes I look at, for some people I think that Maybe that that is the reason why we may have some obesity because they're now feeding their family or people are eating more because yes. at one point you know obesity was a sign of, of wealth, yeah, of status, yeah. So there's a lot of um, negative yes. things that have been presented as far as what yeah. is good and what is but, higher status yeah. that we yeah. are. Yeah, but well, what I've noticed though, Mister Jefferson, that. Like we can, we make, when we make money, we still continue to eat cheap food. Have you noticed that? That's true. That is, yes. It is. It's like, <laughs> it, it is like, that is, you know, well, amazing to me. Like you'll, you know, spend a lot of money on like a clothing or a purse or, you know, a movie ticket or something. And then, you know, not want organic food or grass fed beef or, you know what I mean? Or care about the natural chicken or, you know, anything like, oh, that's a waste of money. The food and what you ingest has become a waste of money, but you know, just you know, other things that to me are more of a waste of money. I feel like that is priceless to take care of our health. You know, that is amazing. Mm. Yeah, because that certain that certain restaurant which I won't name, if they have a all you can eat mm -hmm. on a low price, mm -hmm. then you that's where you go. Right. Right? And with it, like I told my daughter, I was like, anytime they give you anything free, don't, you know, don't even worry about it. You know, like, 
If you say, no, I don't want any french fries, and they go, oh, it comes with the meal, you know, <laughs> like, no, I don't want any french fries. Like, you know, you know, like, and then also, <clears throat> like, stress, you know, makes everything that we eat even worse. Like, because it's just, you know, the more, like, stress is just straight a killer. It's just a killer. Like, so if we have this stressors from discrimination and knowing you're not getting equal pay, uh, being a single parent, having to run up and down the street and run to the second job and two or three jobs and, you know, just, and you're grabbing things, you know, it, it affects our health. And then with the shortened life and like, you know, and, and not being able to have the energy to do everything that you deserve to be able to do cuts down on our income. It cuts down on our wealth. It's, you know, it's a bad, it's a bad cycle and Afroeconomics is putting an end to it, you know, because we're committed to self-reliance. We're committed to increasing our knowledge. We got that 10th principle of making sure that we're protecting our health, you know, that we can do, you know, we can do this. We got the principle seven of making sure that we protect our credit, build our credit, you know, and we'll have that ninth principle of straight perseverance. And doing all of that with integrity, the fifth principle. So you know, we can do this. We can do it. You know, we just have to like, you know, that no matter how many articles they put out, Mr. Jefferson, you know it, no matter how much research they do to tell us how bad off we're doing, that we still can get through all of this. And that everything that we do right now impacts all of our legacy behind us. They don't have to be those statistics. They can become, you know, we can build up their wealth now. We can make some smart moves now. We don't have any right, any, you know, we have to, we don't have, we can't give up. We can't give up. We can't accept it. We can't wait on the government. It's not gonna happen. This is not gonna happen. Even when, you know, even when they do these things, that are make it easier for you to purchase a home and things like that. It's only because they put insurance on it to protect themselves from the foreclosure, you know. So, but they know that your your likelihood of foreclosure is so much higher because they're putting you into massive amounts of debt before you're ready for it. Let's not buy anything until we're ready for it. Mm. Well, that is tonight. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye, <laughs> sweetheart. All right, bye. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell you, both of those callers, I was talking to them like I know them, but I have not met them face-to-face -face yet. I am going to meet Miss Rhonda, though. I'm going to see her this weekend, I hope. And then, then I'm going to meet Mr. Jefferson one day. He's going to join, too. Why? Miss Rhonda is a member. That's the way we roll. Call in. I'm going to make you a member. <laughs> Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night. Remember, no matter how many articles on economic inequality, we're, we're making a difference. We're making a difference. You can do this. Make a continued effort to be all that you can be. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dreamer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing, Miss Ethel? Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Next time, Mr. Banks, you have to call in. Great comments. Blessings to y'all. See you all soon. Thank you for registering. <laughs>